Amen. We thank God for that song because it's it's speaking to us. No higher plane that we found. Lord, plant our feet on higher ground. And this is why we're in this Bible study, because we just don't want to be hard because um, the Lord wants to move us into a new lived lifestyle here on earth. And right before we turn to Brother Billy, it was something that had hit my heart. So many things that's happening in the earth today. And I really believe that it's not because God's people are doing anything wrong, but that God himself wants to come and do it right and do it right through us at this time. And so at this time, Brother Billy, uh, we're here waiting uh, to hear the word of God and kingdom lifestyle. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is a joy to come back again after uh, we had that break as we took uh, reviews of our past studies on Quest for God. And this is a new series that God is leading us to begin. Uh, and the book of study has that been announced is the kingdom lifestyle. And we hope that by God's grace, as we go through this, we'll be studying from week to week, trusting that God will help us and draw us to himself, particularly uh, by his own mighty hand and by the outworking of his spirit in the name of Jesus. We want to thank God for the ministration from our brethren in Ghana, who had again set us off on a prayer, Lord, plant my feet on the higher ground. And uh, this evening we shall begin from the first chapter of a kingdom lifestyle. Shall we pray together? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity of our coming again to start a new series on this Bible study, particularly as we begin to focus on the kingdom lifestyle. Lord, as you took your disciples to the mount and you sat uh, with them and stars sat on them to teach them the principles of the kingdom of God, uh, the parables of the kingdom of God, the promises of the kingdom of God, and the expectation of the kingdom of God. We want to desire of you today that as we begin this study, you will open our eyes, you will draw us to yourself. What we desire is that you fellowship with us, you will breathe upon us, and you will impart us with your own very life so that the lifestyle of the kingdom of God may become the life we also live while we are still here. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of coming together again. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in different parts of the world, wherever they may be connecting. We ask, Lord, that you reach one, each one of us according to your wisdom, and according to your riches in glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, if you will uh, take your book, if you already have a copy of it, we'll be walking through uh, as the Lord will guide us. And today, being the first introduction, of uh, this particular series, I would like to draw your attention to one or two things before we get into the study itself. The first thing is that uh, the study outline, we have prepared it particularly to lead you into studying the Bible. Even though there are comments that were put into the material itself, the comments are only to guide you onto personal study and personal revelation. 
I'd like to request that as we go through the book, chapter by chapter, and as we study, I would like you to be like the Berean Christian. We're told that the Berean Christian, after they listened to Paul, they went back home to search the scriptures. If the things that Paul was saying uh, was correct or not. And the Bible said they were more noble than the people of Thessalonica uh, because this one just heard and without fully understanding and they were without searching. He just refused and said, no, it cannot be true. It cannot be true. Just and as we study together. Let me take the introduction. I'll read it out as it is before we start looking at scriptures themselves. Now, severally, as we study scriptures and watch God's dealings with men and women whom he used to bear his word to others, each one of them was summoned up to the mount at one point or the other in their journey with God. He sat on their lives on the mount, away from the crowd that will always stay back at the foot of the hill. The content dealings with these men on the mount was usually unknown unto multitudes in the valley. Most of the time, they came back with their faces shining because of some unspeakable experiences and deep visions of the Lord they were privileged to see and to have. Now, just before I go ahead, I was only using that paragraph to note that uh, when you go through scriptures and as you go from one point to another, whether it be in the Genesis, Exodus, or even in the New Testament, we see that God uh, looks for a place where he can specially and specifically encounter and engage those that he intends to use for a special assignment in their own generation, or those who he's setting apart to be a voice for him. He always takes them aside. And I'm hoping and praying that as we go again into this Bible study, God will be drawing you aside to himself. God will be uh, setting you aside, setting you apart, and he'll be speaking deliberately to your life. He will be making input into your inner man so that you are well equipped to fulfill his mandate for you on the face of the earth. Why does he call them to the mount? We said, usually away from the crowd. One of the things I've known about the crowd is that the crowd are always in the crowd. The crowd cannot pay the price of climbing. So when the sisters were singing, I said, Lord, plant my feet on the higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. It is because uh, such things only happen on the mount. Such things are only revealed when a man is willing to climb higher with the Lord and move away from the multitude that are usually in the valley. But one thing is certain. Men are never made in the valley or amidst the multitude. This mountain climbing experience into the fullness of God and the divine impartation, as well as a sample of such teachings, he gives his chosen men shall be the focus of this particular Bible study series. As disciples ourselves, we long to climb up to him on the mount for specific instructions for our lives so that we can become vessels of honor in his hands. I'm trusting that while we are going through these studies, it will be a mountain climbing 
for me and you to be a time of pressing in and climbing higher and coming onto a higher plane than we have ever been. Some of you have followed us uh, throughout one year that we have done Bible study online as we are looking at quests for God. Now, this is the next is the next aspect. When a man has a desire to work with God, the next thing is for God to take him to where he can teach him, where he can show him secrets, where he can explain details into his life. My prayer is that even as we go ahead, the Lord will continue to draw you and draw me to himself, that we will climb to him on the mount and let him give us specific instructions for our lives so that we can become vessels of honor in his hands and a voice for his kingdom at a time like this. Now, instructions on the mount are usually for the serious minded. Instructions for the on the mount, they are not given to casual followers. Casual followers, they are always in the valley. The philosophy of casual followers is whatever go up shall come down. In their mind, whatever it is, when it comes down, we will catch it. They don't understand that God is very jealous about his, about his pairs, about his mistress. He doesn't give it to those who do not care. God does not pamper any man who summons the courage to come up to the man with him. He does not waste their lives either. It could be so meticulous and painstaking with details of their lives to the point that they may feel the heat of his scrutiny, but at the end, they come forth in his glory. Now, details, details that most men overlook in our character and actions do not escape the scrutiny of the Lord especially for someone that he wants to use for noble purposes. So, brothers and sisters, this particular study might be digging into details of our work with God. God might be very, very meticulous in scrutinizing our personal relationship with him. It is not so as to condemn you or to pull you down. God does all of that in order to prepare you and make you ready for the kind of glory that he wants to bear in your own generation. I just want to pray that God will give you courage to come up to the mount with him and along with us. Therefore, when in the course of these studies, details and minute issues of life and character are being discussed, and you are required to act and bring your life into divine alignment and balance, do not be offended. I pray you will not, and I trust God that you will not. Do not hesitate to rise up and act on these demands on your life, and do act fast for that matter. May these studies actually set your feet on a higher ground of God's students. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that. Now, we are going to take instances on the month. Instances that God calls people to come and be with him on the month and what he wanted to achieve in their lives. What one passage that will be recurring for us as we go through this particular study will be Matthew chapter 5. And I would like Sister Jenna to help us introduce Matthew chapter 5. She will read verse 1 and verse 2. We are reading it because it's going to be thematic 
for us in the course of this study. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 1 and 2, Sister Jeanette. Matthew 5, verse 1 and 2 in the New King James. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Thank you very much. The Bible said, when he saw the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came up to him and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, and you will notice that we have not, we are not yet ready to begin to talk about what he said to them. So that's why we are stopping at that passage. Now, but the first thing that touches me is that seeing the multitude, he left the multitude and he climbed to the mount and he sat down as if to say, those who are serious, those who are longing and those who are hungry and thirsty to get something higher than what people are getting in the valley, I wait for them to climb up. And the Bible said, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and told them, saying, my prayer is that God will draw you and bring you higher to where the Lord can begin to speak deeply unto you. Uh, that's all we're going to pick at that point. So we now want to look at different instances where we see God drawing people to the mount and encountering them. And as usual, we'd like to begin today again with the experience of Abraham on the mount of Moriah. Abraham on the mount of Moriah. Now we're going to pick Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 6. For our clearance, we read, Genesis 22, 1 to 6. Sister Marcela, we read verse 9 and 10. And Sister Chanel, we read verse 14 to 19. Let's speak Genesis chapter 22. We're taking it from verse 1 to 6, 9 and 10, 14 to 19. Black Clarence, can you start us off? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said to him, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood of the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Verse 9 and 10, Stamasela. Genesis 22, 9 and 10 says, when they arrived at the place where God had told Abraham to go, he built an altar and placed the wood in order, ready for the fire, and then tied Isaac and laid him on the altar over the wood. And Abraham took the knife and lifted it up to plunge it into his son to slay him. Thank you. 14 to 19, Sister Jenner. 
And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will, shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men and they rose and went together to Beersheba and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Amen. Thank you very much. Now we are coming to this particular chapter in the life of Abraham. And you will notice that the story of Abraham with God has started from chapter 12. And we have looked at various issues in his life up to the point at which the promise of a son that he had been waiting for for several years was fulfilled. And Isaac was born according to prophecy. And Isaac started growing. And you remember that in that chapter 21, because uh, the son of the born woman was persecuting this boy, it was decided and approved also by God that the born woman and her mother, I mean, and her son must be cast out. And so as at this point, Abraham now virtually has only Isaac in his hand and in his life, because any alternative, every other plan B had been taken off. And God needed to take Abraham higher than where he had been. God needed to bring the covenant that he had been holding out towards Abraham, he needed to bring it to be. And it cannot be anywhere else. It has to be on the mount. And you will see that the passage that uh, we started to read said, it came to pass after these things, which means there are several things that have happened, that have taken place. As some of you, God has uh, been keeping you, you have experienced several things in your life. And we are coming to a critical point now. And God wants to take you higher. God wants to take you beyond where you used to be. God wants to manifest himself to you beyond your old experience. God said to Abraham, and I want to read that now. He said, afterward, it came to pass, after these things, that God did test Abraham. God did test Abraham. God was tempting him and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you of. Now we see that this particular journey, this particular experience, this particular encounter that God was planning to have with Abraham will not be possible where he was living. He will need to get to a month. He would like to get to a place and on a month that God will show him, where God will speak to him and God will encounter him. Now, I just want to say that as we are going ahead, God 
might want to draw you onto a closer walk with him. And God might be wanting you to come to a place where the most precious thing in your life, you are willing to lay it on the altar of sacrifice. God might, wanting, might be wanting to confirm his covenant with your life, and it will require that you will particularly, particularly uh, get ready to come on this higher ground with God. It may require that things will be left behind, uh, friends and cherished relationship may have to be uh, left aside so that what God wants to do in your life might actually become a possible and a reality. And so we saw that Abraham rose and Abraham began to make this journey. The Bible says he saddled his ass. He took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and they cleared the wool for the burnt offering. And he rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. That's a place of divine encounter. That's a place of a divine meeting and communion with God, where the Lord is willing to show you and to teach you and to bring you into a new dimension of his work with you. And I'm just asking whether you'll be willing to take that journey. Will you be willing in the course of this series to take that journey with God and say, Lord, take me to the mount. Take me to where you unveil yourself to your disciples. Take me to where you reveal your purpose unto your people. I want you to carry me. Take me along with you. And, you know, and this journey, they took up to three days. The Bible says, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You'll be wondering, why couldn't he just go and do it in his backyard? Why is God pointing a mountain somewhere to him and it took three days' journey for him to even get there? Now we're going to see what is the implication of all of this as we go on in the study by the grace of God. So I want a, a Brother Clarence to read the notes that were put under that. This is a climax. So can you read that for us? before we now get into studying the verse-by-verse -verse issues that are in that scripture. Yes, sir. For that clearance, yes. This is a climax in Abraham's walk with the Lord. Abraham had waited for the child of promise for 25 years. Finally, Isaac came, and his coming naturally brought untold excitement until he took center stage in Abraham's heart and devotion. For God to continue with him, God needed to deal with this blessing that had become a distraction. Abraham needed to bring out, Abraham needed to bring out of his heart this Isaac so that God might proceed with him into the fullness of his plan and purpose for his life and call. He needed to make a burnt offering of this Isaac, whom he now loved obviously more than God. Mm. This cannot be done anywhere else, but on the Mount alone. Let us study the issue involved of this offering note. All right. right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, so sir. we begin to now look at the various issues that are involved in this particular offering that God was demanding on the Mount uh, from Abraham's life. Even though God may have given you a blessing, when that blessing is uh, becoming the climax of your life and is going to block you from a higher experience with God, it is time to lay that blessing on the altar. Even if it was a fulfilled promise, for that fulfilled promise is beginning to replace where God should be in your life is beginning to take, you know, the center stage of your affection. 
If God does not want you to stagnate where you have reached, it is time to climb to the mount and lay that matter as an offering unto the Lord. And I want to pray that while we begin this Bible study, as we are beginning to look at kingdom lifestyle, I wish to say to you that the lifestyle of those who excel in the kingdom of God is that nothing, nothing is too big for them to lay down in order for them to possess God. Nothing is too big, even if it was what God gave before. And that thing is becoming a blockage onto accessing God. Nothing, certain should never be too big to lay down so that you can come on with God. And this was what God was demanding from the life of Abraham at this critical point. So let's see a few things that will become clear as we check the story more deliberately. The first thing we saw was that when God called Abraham in chapter 22 and verse 1, we are told that, and it came to pass after these things, that God did tempt Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. So we said the first issue is that willingness, personal availability, and to listen to God, to be what God wants to be, and to climb higher with God. Now, here am I. This was Abraham's response for this mountain top experience. Your availability is the first step to going and growing higher with the Lord. Let me repeat this. Your availability is the first step to going and to growing higher with the Lord. Wherever you have reached, if you must go higher, it must, if, if you must grow higher, if you must advance into the uh, greater purposes of God for your life, you must be ready to make yourself available. Abraham said, here am I, here am I. Even if you are calling me to a greater consecration, Lord, here am I. Even if you are demanding something more from my hand, Lord, here am I. You have to be present to present yourself before the Lord. Those who are too busy and unable to free themselves from the issues of the valley cannot climb to be with God on the mount. Before I leave that, I must ask you a question. Are you stuck in the valley? Are you entangled even with the blessings that God had blessed you with before? as the blessing of the Lord becomes scale in your hand to such a point that every attempt for God to take you higher, to call you to the higher ground, you are resisting it because this thing that you have collected, I'm hearing you say, well, that is enough. If there's anything more than this, I'm not ready. Oh my God. If you thought that you have reached the climax or that you have got all that God was willing to give you, then that is rather unfortunate. Because all that you have got now presently, they are very, very infinitesimally small compared with what God is willing to do for you and what God is willing to impart onto your life. Now let's look at the second point there. You remember that that verse 22, please go back to that verse 22. And the Lord said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a bond offering unto one upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you about. God was very specific where to collect this offering. God was very specific we had to go and lay it down. God was not gambling. God was not saying anywhere you like. 
he was very deliberate. He even mentioned where the mountain is, and then one of the mountains of which I will point to you. I will still talk to you. And he said, take now the son, the only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the mount, into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a bond of me upon one of the mountains, which I'll tell you of. Now, may I say to you, my dear brother, and maybe I should ask her sister Marcella to read the summary under that section B before we go ahead. And it reads, anywhere is nowhere with God. Mm. Places and points of commitment mean a lot in your walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is a place to meet with God. There are characteristics of the place conducive to divine encounter. The mount is different from the valley. You have to go there to be where God can meet you. Places away from the familiar environment may add to your concentration. Consecration. Thank you very much. So please let me repeat to you again. Anywhere is nowhere with God. God wants to pin you down to a place or to a point of commitment, a place you will never forget, so that what God wants to do through your life may be fully and completely accomplished. You need to go there to be where God can meet you. We want to note that God was a, a deliberate, and Abraham said, here am I. So let's look at number C, the third point that comes out in that story. We're still reading that story, but if you look at verse 3, we are told that Abraham rose up early in the morning and sat to his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wool for the bond of him and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Now Abraham rose early and went into the place of which God I told him. Now, what does that show you? That Abraham rose early. Abraham was not going to wait until the body or the fire that God placed on his heart has melted or has dissipated. He was not going to wait until all the affairs of life would choke him up on the day that he was meant to go to the man to be with God and to make that supreme sacrifice. Many of you, you want to serve God, but I can see that you are crowded in the night, and in the morning, when you should have been alone with God on the mount, you rush again into the valley, and at that point still, your life was uh, choked, and God could not achieve what you were wanted to do in your life again, so that Abraham, rose early. And I want to say to you that the secret of obedience is early obedience. Once you begin to procrastinate obedience, you cannot but reason with blood and flesh. You find yourself asking, do you think it's correct? Uh, should a Christian do this and do that? When you start asking such kind of question, it shows that God has already invited you to the month, you are only now finding excuse to be absent. You need to be present there for God to take whatever he wants to pour into your life or take from you. Prompt obedience, early rising, and due preparations of mind and heart are necessary and common to all men who climb higher in their relationship with the Lord. Those who are slack in obeying God, those who slay 
and procrastinate their response to God's invitation to the man, often they find it difficult to obey later. Find it difficult and almost impossible to obey later. The reason is because when God invites you, that's the Kairos moment to stand. That's the point at which you say, yes, Lord, I am ready. I am here to go with you. Now, can we check the third point there? On the third day, Abraham saw the place afar off. I think it's Marcella that, uh, no? Brother Clarence, can you go back to the passage you read for us and read for us verse 4, verse 5, and get to verse 6 again? Yes, Brother sir. Clarence. Yeah. Verses four, five, and six. Mm. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. Mm. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. All right, thank you. The question that I'm trying to raise in this section is, why is it that it took three days for Abraham to get near the place? So on the third day, Abraham saw the place afar off. He lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. Why can't he just rise up, and any first Monday he met, he should have done his sacrifice there. Or any little he be around this company should have done so. But we saw that God's determined cancer was going to be very important uh, for Abraham in obedience to what God is asking him to do. Now, what does it mean when you have traveled three days to get to a place and you didn't go back. You didn't go back. You didn't return. What lesson must we learn out of that? Now let's look at the summaries. Can we ask Janet to read the summary under that number D? We thought the Abraham saw this afar. Persistence, perseverance, and purposefulness are matters to consider if you would mount up with the Lord as eagles. It is not the first step or the first attempt that takes you to the climax of communion with the Lord. When God seems not to be speaking and the answers we seek seem to be long in coming, as those who will experience God on the mount, we keep going. We keep on keeping on. We may still be on the first or second day of journeying into God. Mm. Mm. May the Lord give you understanding. Persistence, perseverance, and purposefulness are matters we must consider. If you also, if you will mount up with the Lord, as eagles. If you are going to climb higher with God, you are going to get into the bigger things that God wants to do in your life. If you are going to be uh, delivered from the good thing that has happened, for you to get to the better things that are in store, then you need to exhibit persistence perseverance and purposefulness. These three matters are very critical and we saw it in the life of Abraham here. Now we are told that he rose early and began to pursue the place where God showed him and told him. And after three days that he had been traveling, he only came to see the place afar off. You can imagine what we are talking about. If he was not committed, if he was not 
purposeful, he has not determined there's a purpose in his heart, you will have seen that he will have gone back. You will have said, well, I tried. And then after a day, he will have returned. But God said to him, we are going until you get to the place where I will tell you about. And so we saw that any of us that is desiring to climb higher with God, to increase in our knowledge of God and in our effectiveness of service to the Lord, and you really, really need to do all of this in order for you to excel where God is wanting to carry you. Now, but we are noting here that if you are not persevering, if you are not persisting, and if you are not purposeful, you may have returned back. The summary that uh, we read said, it is not the first step or the first attempt that takes you to the climax of communion with the Lord. When God seems not to be speaking, and the answers we seek seem to be long in coming, as those who will experience God on demand, we keep going, we keep on, and we keep keeping on. It is possible that on your journey, you are still on the first day. It is possible that in your journey, you are on the second day. But the third day, he said, the Lord will revive us. I pray that you will persevere, you will persist, you will be purposeful until God has brought you to that place of enlightenment that he's been speaking and promising us by the grace of God. Now, I want to move very quickly to uh, the next one, number F, I mean, number E. And to the young men, Abraham spoke. I would like us to now look at what he did in verse 5 of chapter 22 with the young men that were following him. Can you please help us check verse 5? Uh, Brother Clarence, that's what you have been reading. So let me ask you to read verse 5 again. Yes, sir. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey and the lad. Excuse me. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Mm. Stay here. Abide here with the ass, and I will go yonder and worship. I will go yonder this lad, and then I will return to you to worship. Now, look at the issues we are talking about here. He knew that God was asking him to take his only son to the mount to be sacrificed. He did not include these two young men. He did not include the servants in his house. God didn't speak to them. So there must be a time when the company you are keeping, you may need to walk away from them in order for you to be who you are supposed to be for God. Sometimes your peers may no longer be able to climb the mount with you, and they may want to settle on their own little, little plateau. You must go beyond them. You must reach out to God by yourself. You must believe that God is able to do what he has promised us. So can I now ask Sister Janet again to read the, 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 the comment in that section E? You cannot. You cannot get to the mount in the company of men, acquaintances and asses. These things, in addition to people, though helpful, will hinder you from going yonder with the, the Lord. There is a yonder to go. He who is not willing to go beyond human consideration cannot mm. walk tall with the Lord. No. Mm. The braying of the asses and the cry of sympathizers are always mm. hindrances to a deep walk with God. 
did you understand that? Sister Jenny, please wait before you go ahead. My brother, my dear sister, if you are going to get to the very depth of God's purpose for your life, there's a yonder to go. And you cannot go there in the company of men, the company of acquaintances and assets. There's a yonder to go. And the question I'm asking is that, are you willing to go yonder with God? Are you willing to go yonder with your consecration? Are you willing to go yonder? Yonder, where other people come and drop, where others came and said to, we like to go yonder and see what God can do with a life that is willing to come with him. Thank you, Sister, uh, Sister Marcela. You will now pick it from where Jenny has stopped. We we'll just read that last paragraph before we go to number F. It says, he had traveled three days, yet there was still a, yon a yonder he must go. What are your young men and your asses you must leave behind? Mm. And which yonder must you go in mm. order to get on a mount where the Lord has been waiting to bless you? Right, my brother, my sister. What are your young men and your young asses that you must leave behind? And which yonder must you go in order to get on the mount where the Lord has been waiting to bless you? This will be a matter that I want you to think through today. What is the yonder I must go? What are the young men, young women I must leave behind? What are the asses that are bleating here and there and it's not letting me go to hear God? And that yonder that you must go, you need to identify it and then get on to know where God is demanding for you to be in order to grow in your knowledge of God at a time like this. Let me ask you again. What are the young men you must let go? What are the young women that you must give up? I want to ask again, what is the yonder that God is setting before you to come? And why will you want to stop halfway? Why will you not want to get the climax, the fullness of what God has in store for your own life? Please think about it. Even as we are going to be praying at the end of this particular study, I'd like you to say to God, draw me to the mount. Take me away from the crowd. Take me away from the valley. Cause me to walk into your purposes and into my inheritance in the coming days in the name of Jesus Christ. Number F, we want you to read verse 14 to 19. Again, even though we read it in that series, let's now read it again. 14 to 19. Uh, please turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 14 to 19. Okay. Who do you want to read that for you, sir? Right. I think you should read for me. Yes, sir. Yes. 14 and 19. Yes. 14 and Abraham. Yes. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and of the sands of which are on the sea, seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates 
of their enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Thank so Abraham, you. Ret- yes, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. We are stopping at that because what we wanted to check, we want to discover the peculiar blessings on the month when you are able to get there, when you are able to actually fulfill the desire of God, what are the blessings that God will bring in? You remember that as they were going, as they were going, Isaac asked his father, here is the night, here is the fire, and here is the firewood. But where is the lamb for the offering? Where is the lamb that we are using for this offering? And that was a very, very sensitive question. Because Abraham, as at this time, had not yet told Isaac that you are the offering I'm going to offer to God. Maybe he will have run away. Perhaps Isaac would have protested. But he had kept it in his mind. He knew that this boy is the one that God is demanding for me to go and lay on the altar. And he was not thinking that he would do something else. He knew that it would be Isaac that needed to be laid on the altar. He didn't want the young man to come and break his heart with tears and say, oh, uncle, are you you doing this also? He didn't want that. And so when the young man asked, where is the lamb? He said, the Lord shall provide. And that was the beginning of that mountain. So when he go to the mount, where the Lord told him, and he stepped for the son, and he took his son and brought the knife, and he was ready to slay him. Then the Bible said, I want you to please look at what God said before we go to look at the blessings. Now, he said, in verse 11 and verse 12, uh, Marcella, can you try to read verse 11 and verse 12 for us up to 13 before we now come to verse 14? Sister Marcella. Verse 11 says, But the Lord's angel shouted from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he answered. Don't hurt the boy or harm him in any way, the angel said. Mm. Now I know that you truly obey God Mm. because you were willing to offer him your only son. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the bushes. So he took the ram and sacrificed sacrificed it in the place of his son. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When the Lord saw that Abraham actually was going to obey God, give up that singular blessing that remained in his life, he was willing to let it go. We saw that the Bible said, God spoke all the way, lay not your hand upon the Lord, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. I know now that you fear God. And I know that you have determined to love God with all your heart, saying that you have not withheld your son and your only son from me. It is from that point that God opened his eyes to see the ram that was caught in the tickets. Now, so if you look at what Abraham did and the response that God was bringing, that's what I wanted to raise with you at this point. Now he said, as Abraham 
saw the provision and said, oh, he called the place Jehovah Jireh, which is the Lord shall provide. As it is said to this day, in the month of the Lord, it shall be seen. First and foremost, my dear brother, let me note with you in verse 14, that when you take a step of obedience, when you move with God, and you put aside every hindrance, including friends that will delay you in obeying God. There are some of you that God is speaking to you to take a step of obedience, to come to the mount, to come to a higher ground than where you are. But when you reason with flesh and blood, when you confer with friends, they told you that, no, you don't have to trouble yourself that far. Even they themselves, they have got to a place of good enough, and they're saying, in fact, you are good enough, you are, you are all right, God is good, God is not uh, wicked as to make such a demand on your life. And what did you do? You settle down. That's why you are now a mediocre. That's why you did not get to the climax of the purpose of God for your life. That's why you are standing about. I want to note with you that when you go to that point and God saw, God saw that this man now has left all and he loved me completely, then the Lord began to speak to him. The Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. The second time God was speaking to him now. Well, now let's see what God was bringing forth out of that. Number one, we saw that God said, by myself have I sworn. You will remember that when we were dealing with possessing God, one of the things that God had told Abraham in chapter 15, before he deviated, God said, I am your great exceeding exceeding great reward do not fear i am your portion i offer myself as your reward but you see because of the body in his heart for a child he said what will you give me and what will you give me what does that mean there are some of us that could not receive all that god offers to us because our hunger for temporary things, our hunger for carnal things, our hunger for something visible immediately has hindered us from going yonder with God. My friend, I want to ask you, God's offer unto Abraham on this occasion said, by myself, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, because thou hast done this thing. And thou hast not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing, I will bless you. Now, I was looking at that, that God was coming to commit himself to a man with an oath. God is saying, by myself. You know, if you go to the book of Hebrews, I want all of you to quickly follow me to Hebrews chapter 6, where the Bible refer to this particular uh, experience on the mount that Abraham had and see how the Holy Spirit was drawing issues for those of us to whom the end of the world has come. In verse 13, chapter 6 and verse 13, maybe I should read, let me read for you from verse 10. For God, is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of law, which you have shown towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and you do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We do not want you to become sluggish in your pursuit. God is asking you to come up 
Come up to the mount. Come up to the mount. There's something higher that you have never seen. There's a place God wants to take you in your walk with him, in your experience with him. You don't need to stay. You don't need to dwell in the land of good enough. When there's something better, when there's something higher, when there's something glorious that God is planning for your life. The Bible noted, it said, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. So, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. We are in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his promise, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might also have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. I noted that on that month, God was making a commitment of himself, a commitment of his integrity, a commitment of the entirety of his personality. He said, by myself, have I sworn. Because there's nothing else higher by which God can swear an oath to Abraham. I want to put it to you. When you climb, when you press on to come with God to the mount, when you are not satisfied to dwell with the crowd in the valley, when your heart is saying, oh God, is there no higher ground? Is there no yonder place to go with you? Is there no further, further journey I can make into the purpose of God for my life? Something is waiting for you there. A glory is waiting for you there. He said, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and you have not withheld your son, thy only son, that in blessing I bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. My dear brother, my dear sister, are you desiring that God will make you a blessing and that your influence will spread and affect many? Are you looking forward to an unprecedented outpouring of the grace of God, of the Spirit of God, of the power of God on your life? Are you concerned about going beyond the ordinary where majority of our colleagues are sitting, I dare ask you today that if you will come with God to the mount, if you will rise beyond mediocrity, if you will say, Lord, take me higher, and whatever I say, that God is saying, but well, this is beginning to become an idol in your life. This is beginning to stop me from being your God, from being your possession, can you bring it and lay it down? Can you lay it on the altar? When Abraham agreed to do that, we see what God did for him. Can I ask Sister Jenny to now read the summary under number eight for us? I suppose that I would love to stop at that point here today because uh, I will want to now ask you to spend a bit of time because today is just our general introduction. And we're saying the journey to the mount, the journey to the higher ground, the journey to the place where God can commit himself is a journey that you cannot do in company of people. It's not a journey you can go with asses and with other things. 
you must be ready to travel there with yourself, to be ready to lay down your most precious thing and say, God, if this will hinder me, take it away. And you will see that at the end of the day, he received Isaac as though he was receiving him out of resurrection. I will read that to you before we pray together. Sister Janet, would you like to help us read the summary under that number F? Everyone who endures going alone to the Lord on the mount always comes back with a definite blessing and impartation. Amen. God's invitation to the mount is never without a purpose. Mm. Those who seek him find him. Mm. And they even find blessings beyond whatever they had dreamed possible. Mm. What challenges come to your heart as you study Abraham on this mount? Outline them for discussion and personal prayer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, I want to put it to you. Just as that summary is drawing conclusion, he said, everyone, without exception, who endures going alone to the Lord on the mount, who is willing to severe every hindrance, or even what is not a hindrance, is not wrong, is not sin, but it's an encumbrance on your journey. Any friend that is not going to let you climb to the climbers with God, there must be a point where you say, please wait here, wait here. I and the Lord will go yonder. we we'll go to the mount to worship the Lord and we will return unto you. Everyone who endures going alone to the mount on the, I mean, to the Lord on the mount, they don't come back empty-handed. They always come back with a definite blessing and a definite impartation upon their lives. My brother, my dear sister, there's no one who presses on with God, who climbs higher with God, who desire and say, God, if there's a yonder to go, I'm ready to go with you. If there's something beyond where I am now, I am ready to come with you into it. There's no man that does that, that will not return with a definite blessing and a definite impartation. So God's invitation to the man has never been without a purpose. God does not call a man yonder God does not bring you higher if there is nothing higher that he wants to do in your life, something higher that he wants to impart into your life. It can't be without a purpose. All those who seek him, we know they find him. Those who sought him with all their heart, God has blessed them beyond what they could ever imagine or dreamed possible. Now, just for me to conclude, I want to say that the journey to the mount is always a journey of faith. And that's what we saw in the life of Abraham. And that's what we want to conclude with. As we start this Bible study series this time, and I'm asking you to join me to climb up, to go to where the master is seated, for us to listen to him and hear him afresh, and for him to take us beyond the crowd, beyond the valley, beyond the ordinary, for us to hear God and bring his glory to him, to impart, I mean, to affect our generation and to bring his word to bear upon the people that we will relate with. It is important that you have to know that it is by faith that God is drawing you in. It's never by any other means. If you will not believe God, that God that is drawing me, drawing me and say, drop this, uh, don't bring this, uh, this I need to go and uh, finish it in your life. God who is doing that. He's not doing it without a purpose. And God is never, never a debtor to any soul. When you take step, when you take step to wrong with God, 
when it takes time to go on the mount with God. So you can see now that this man that I'm dealing with is not just one here. It is a higher work with God, a higher experience with God, a closer intimacy with the Lord that takes you higher and closer to him than where you have ever been. Now, Hebrews 11 was now giving this, this summary of what mobilized Abraham. Even though you know as we read the story, you will not see that he took a step by faith. You will just think that, well, God told him and he rose. I want you to know that there was some dynamics in his heart that made that journey possible, that made him to persevere, that made him to be purposeful, and that made him to climb and climb, even when it made him alone and his son Isaac. What was that secret? Look at Hebrews chapter 11 this time. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Now, by faith, I'm reading verse 17. Hebrews 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. You will remember that that verse 17 was like the summary of everything we have read in Genesis chapter 22 from verse 1 up to that verse 19. Now he said, but how did it happen? How was it possible for Abraham to take that kind of step, to come to this kind of mountain experience with God, to release what looked the most precious in his life in order to gain God in order for God to now confer his blessing upon his life, even by an oath. Say, by faith, it is by faith. Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall I see the call. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Hallelujah. So as I stop here, this journey that we are starting now will be a journey of faith, and will be a journey by faith. Maybe already tonight or this morning, the Spirit of God has already begun to speak to you. There's an Isaac that is becoming now the climax of your experience. It has come to now block it, it has sealed you up. It has become like the ceiling beyond which you cannot climb. And God is saying, no, no, where you are now is not where I plan you to be. Come up to the mount. But that singular young man that is in your life is injuring you. Bring him and offer him on the altar, on that mountain that I will show you. My dear brother, is there anything that will not allow you to press, to persevere along with us as we begin to climb on the mount, to relate to the Lord, to listen to him in this series of Kingdom Lifestyle? Will you by faith, will you by faith like Abraham did, say by faith when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. Coming to this month will be by faith. And my prayer is that you will not hesitate. You will not accept anything less. You will not stay shorter than where God wanted to plant you. May the Lord help you. May the Lord draw you to himself, even particularly today, in the name of Jesus Christ. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. And what was the result of that? Because he counted that the Lord was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure, which means even as they were going, Abraham was telling himself, yes, Lord, if Isaac is not going to let me possess you as you have promised me, I'm laying him down. But because you are the one that said 
in your seed, in your son Isaac, will you be named? And it is through him that the seed that will bruise the head of Satan, I mean, the serpent will come. He said he believed that even though the boy were dead, he will receive him out by resurrection. And God did much more than that. I want to beg you as we pray together to ask you to check within your heart. Is there any matter that is standing between you and the Savior? Is there something you need to have let go and you are still holding? Is there any issue that God is saying, lose it, let it go, let it go. I will do more than that for you. And unbelief is saying, eh, eh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure God will remember me. Let me just stay where I am now. Would you like to take note of these issues? We are going to pray together for now. And it might be that you are listening to this Bible study today. And we are talking of coming up to the month. And there are shackles on your own leg. There are entanglements in your life. Maybe entanglement of sin. Whereas for Abraham, it was not sin that God was asking him to go and live. It was his Isaac. It was a blessed promise. Something that God himself was the one that gave him. God is saying, go and lay it down. If God is demanding an Isaac from an Abraham, and you are still playing around sin, and you are still struggling with Agar and with Ishmael in your life, today, as a way forward, you need also to just step before God and say, Father, Father, this thing that is even keeping me away from seeing your face, take it away from me now. Deliver me particularly. If a man will not say yes to the Lord, he cannot climb, he cannot rise. You cannot see victory in what you do. Let us please pray together. And if you are giving your heart to Christ and say, Lord, take away my hindrances. Take away those things that will not let me see your glory in the land of the living. Take it away today. Take it away in my life. Lord Jesus, I want to put my hand in your hand. I know he's willing and he's been waiting, he's been knocking. And he said, give me your heart, my son, and let your eyes observe my ways. We're going to pray on that together. And if you are making a decision, please do it. Either you are your bedside or you are listening to this Bible study together in your family, or you have a group where you are sitting together, or as a, a church, you are listening and following this Bible study. I want you to pray. I want you to make your life right with God. If there's somebody there that can assist you with cancer, please discover yourself to that person and say, during the Bible study, I decided to renew my heart I decided to give my heart to Christ. I decided to drop my sin. Ever before God will even think of an Isaac. All I'm carrying is rubbish. Lord, please take it away and let me rise to the mountain where I can see you face to face, where I can hear your word, where I can experience the grace and the kingdom lifestyle itself. Shall we pray together? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to resume the Bible study with this new series. And I hear you say, come up to the mount. I will show you things that eyes have not seen or ears heard. And I will bless you with such a blessing that I've been reserving for you. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters all over the places where they are linking on and they are listening to this message, this Bible study. I ask, Lord, that you will draw us near. We ask, O oh God, that you pierce our ears that we may hear you. We are pleading, O oh God, that all those things that compete for our attention, they will, not, they will not prevail with us anymore in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Even as our brothers and sisters coordinate whatever remains, please guide that this Bible study might bring glory to your name. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Clarence, over to yes, you sir. right now. Yes. Yes, sir.
Um, when we do, uh, do uh, indeed, and thank you, uh, Brother Billy. We we uh, we were at our studies uh, last month, but it's sure good to see you uh, and to hear your voice uh, with us again. And so um, we don't have any questions at this time. Just for this time of just getting started, um, we just want to. I really believe, and I don't want to take us through another prayer. Is that what we've received? Let's take it. I think one of the things that was said is that we would pray and ask God to really speak to us because the Lord was speaking to me on some things that were a blessing and some things that may have been uh, in the past. And the Lord told me myself, he said, I want you to give this to me. You can't carry this up. And so mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, if there's something that God specifically spoke to your life, I'm not going to say much more. If it's ever a time right now to just say, Lord, here it is. One of the things we learn in obedience is to do it right now. The Lord is calling us up to come up higher. There's so yeah. much more the Lord wants to do right now in the earth, right now in the earth. And so if that's you, um, please do it and obey the Lord. Um, we have the book. Uh, we have some announcements that's online um, for if you need to uh, contact anybody for counsel or anything like that. I would encourage you get it now. Don't wait. If you need, there's the, the book for the Kingdom Lifestyle. You can actually get a chance to order it. But let's not uh, waste um, any time. Um, you can actually get it uh, here in the U.S. Uh, with uh, Brother Vince on Living Seed. Uh, and here we are right there online. Uh, in Belize with Brother Dan. In Canada with our Brother Doye. In the United States with Brother Vincent. Also in Nigeria at our uh, Peace House in Boko. And then in the U.K., with Brother Goki. Amen. I won't waste any more time because this time, I believe it was a critical time for you and me where the Lord says, wherever we are, we're not high enough. It's time to come up and to be with him on the mount. Let's pray as we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and thank you um, for this time where you've asked us, Father. You've shown us the way to come up and be with you, to come up to the mount. But your Lord, you, you've got specific things that we must do. We got to hear you. We have to hear you, Lord. And then we have to respond saying, here am I. Here am I. And then Lord, when you've given us and you've been giving us the way to go, let us, let us obey you today, not tomorrow. Obey you today because you've came to us today to show us the way to do it the right way. So Father, that the thing that you may have blessed us with, it may, it won't hinder us. And then Father, you can actually give us really what you really want us to have. Yes, behold, you said myself, I'm going to be, I'm going to be your exceeding great reward. I'm going to do this. Father, the thing that you've blessed us with is not the end. The real blessing, Father, is to have you. So Father, I pray my brothers, for our brothers and sisters that we will go at this time and Father, we will come up to the place you're calling us to do. We will do it now. Obey you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I think I have my phone beat right there um, already. Good. Uh, then we're going to share the grace at this time. As we get ready to go, we all know the time is early, um, but there's nothing else. Um, so we share the grace of God. It says, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, with you now, goodness and mercy shall flow us. I bless you all. Be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Are you please tired? Amen. 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 Amen.
something. <laughs> or with a superior lifestyle, lifestyle. <laughs> every child of God is expected <laughs> to know practice <laughs> and live by this superior lifestyle. If you no, yeah, desire to hour. learn this lifestyle, which was practiced by Jesus himself, <laughs> kindly make a date with Brad Bilea Kani for an online Bible study on the Kingdom Lifestyle every Saturday from 4th September 2021 at 4pm West African time. Connect live on Zoom using the meeting ID and passcode on your screen. On YouTube at Living Seed Media Boko, Facebook at Living Seed GBK and Mixeller at Living Seed Boko. The Kingdom Lifestyle every Saturday at 4pm West African time. Amen. Come on, Thank you. Thank you.